So hello, today I have a problem. I have a sump pump made by Superior and the switch that comes with it is discontinued. So my pump runs all the time and there's a snow melt going on and the water's rushing into my French drain in the basement. So what I did was purchase a Superior pump switch. And I can put this on any pump, it doesn't matter. Why? Because it plugs into the wall, it's a piggyback switch. And I'm gonna show you how to do that, but this one is model number 92010. And it's 10 feet of cord. The cord is super flexible, by the way. And a piggyback plug, so you're going to plug your pump right into the back of it. But I want to show you my pump that's sitting down in the sump. There it is. I think this is a heavy-duty superior pump rated for continuous duty. But I don't want it to run continuously. And here's the old trigger that's part of it right now. And when I looked it up to try to get a replacement for it, it's discontinued. So then I thought there must be a bunch of people in this situation. What would you do? Replace the whole pump? I have one on standby. Two is one and one is none. But in this case, I'm going to replace the switch. But I want to show you first what the symptoms are. What's the problem with this thing? Now, the problem is good news, and that is that the pump does run, as it's doing here, because it's dewatering that basin. What it doesn't do is when this little float donut on that post there gets to the bottom it should shut off the pump but it doesn't it just bottoms out and when it gets there as you're about to see the pump just runs and runs and runs which is maybe why you're looking up something on Google or on YouTube to see if there's a fix for it and there is and it's a cheap fix so there it is running and running all I can do now is unplug it to shut it down but if you're hearing this sound coming from your sump pump the good news is it's running, because to me, the worst case scenario would be that it doesn't start up at all. And that's why I have a backup. And then the little float when it comes back up, so after you unplug it and plug it back in, it does turn off. But I can't see that. The whole purpose of a sump pump is to save your basement from flooding when you're not around. So I bought this superior pump switch from Amazon. I'm gonna put a link down in the video description below so you can find it on your own. Very inexpensive, 20 some dollars. And these are the parts. Comes with a little stick here that has a magnet on it that activates the switch. This is going to strap onto your PVC pipe or whatever kind of riser you have. There's the float and there's the actuator connected to that plug. Three prong plugs. These are the instructions that come with it. Super simple, just look at it. It's the way it's supposed to work. And uh, you can almost feel your way through it, but I'm going to show you step by step how it goes together. Super simple, super fast. Now it comes with two screws, little plastic posts there, and then the rubber retainer. So this is what the electric part of the switch looks like. This only goes on one way when you can match up the screw holes here. So make sure and do that the right way. And then here they are, screws magically put in with a Phillips head screwdriver. And you can copy that configuration and uh, next thing you know here comes the switch just a long piece of plastic with a notch out of one side and that's where that little post goes in but i want to hear the switch go i want to make sure that this thing's working before i put it in the water I don't want to go through all the trouble of setting it up to have it fail so you push that little clip in there it's got little wings that pop out retains itself it's plastic it's never going to rust it's going to last for a long time longer than the switch on the original pump apparently and then we just cycle it a couple times and show you that that's how it works. That's how the switch functions. And we got to put the float on. It doesn't matter, it seems, which side you go in. Same size, same configuration. And uh, we'll put that right on there. So once we slide that in there, you can see that when it rises up, it has enough displacement of water to put pressure on the switch and turn it off when it goes all the way up. Then the weight of that float goes down to the bottom, pulls on that post, and turns it on. And guess what holds it on? This little rubber piece right here. So I push that on until it's flush with the post sticking through the center. Then I use the screw clamp there, and I put it on at the height I want. Take it down to the bottom, because remember, this is just going to be used to turn off the pump. It doesn't turn on the pump, although it will allow electricity to come through, but it interrupts the electricity. It doesn't matter. And here's the piggyback plug that comes with the new switch. So I put that on the outlet. And then I put the switch, the plug, from the pump itself into this one. So now if no electricity is flowing through that piggyback plug, it can't get to the pump to run it. So it's going to turn it off for us. How simple is that? And we're going to run it through the test. There the pump is running. So now we're going to see if it goes on its own. Watch the float to the left. Make sure it's not obstructed at all. 
And then when it gets to the bottom, the weight of that float is going to turn off my pump that was just running and running and running. So there it is. It works. And look, it's not obstructed. Some people will wrap a little piece of rubber onto that riser post before they clamp this on. I find that that metal clamp that comes with it has these little points on it there. So it looks like they're going to hold it in place. But remember, your sump pump might generate quite a bit of vibration and movement. So make sure that this thing's going to stay put. Worst case scenario, the float comes up and shuts off your pump prematurely. And this is tied into a French drain system in my basement. And as I said before, water is coming in because the snow is melting off. Now, I'm not a licensed plumber. I'm not a contractor. I'm just a homeowner. So everything I'm saying here and demonstrating is just practical homeowner stuff. If you've got codes or restrictions for plumbing and sump placement and things like that, this should not be considered a guide for that purpose. This is just a way for you to override in the easiest possible way a failed switch on your sump pump. And it works. Because it's about to turn on again. And there it goes. Satisfactory test. Very happy with the switch. Highly recommend it. That's a superior pump with a discontinued switch on it after looking that up. Now, why didn't I take out the old switch? Well, see how it's threaded right into the top of the casing there? That's got a gasket seal in it. We don't want to open a leak path, so I keep that closed. And don't forget to put your sump pump cover on there. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful.